But you know, before we start, we were just talking about the thing that's actually brought you over here, uh-huh. your music. Um, and I want to start with the fourth chapter. You know, it's something that when I listened to it, it was emotive, introspective, and it was honest. Um, for those who are just seeing this interview now, mm-hmm. take us back to the fourth chapter and what sparked that. Man, uh, you know, the fourth chapter, like, still to this day, you know, I've done a couple projects uh, since I've been an artist, and, you know, they're all, I think, have gotten better in terms of my evolution, you know what I mean, as an artist, and I think with each project, you could tell that I am, my writing's getting better, my production gets better, um, it gets a little more intricate every time, and it gets richer in terms of, like, sonics. But still to this day, the fourth chapter is still the most powerful project I've done, in my opinion. And I, I see through the fans and all the people that, that hit me up and, and just statistically, like, it, it seems to be the project that resonates the most with everybody. And uh, it's funny because that was the first project I really put out. You know, I used to be on Interscope Records. Like, I, was, I had a big record deal and I was working with them uh, on an album. And uh, it's funny, the story behind the fourth chapter EP is originally, when I was signed to Interscope, my vision was to put out an album called The Fourth Chapter. You know, I wrote that song, the title track, well, you know, each verse is a different chapter and I'm going through like my chronological background. And after I wrote that song, I wrote that song, a lot of people don't know that 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 song I actually wrote while I was on Interscope back in the end of 2009, you know. and when I wrote that song, after I wrote it, I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to call the album Fourth Chapter. Because I wrote that song and I was like, dude, I think the rest of the album should revolve around this. And because it's so personal and it explains me as an artist. And, you know, that was my original vision. And it just so happens that it didn't pan out that way. I had that one song, Fourth Chapter. And, you know, as time went on, while I was on the label, they kind of just steered the direction in a different way. And all the other records I started to make weren't like pure and honest and, and they didn't fit within my original vision. So it's like I had this one song called The Fourth Chapter uh, and the rest of the album just were songs that <clears throat> were label influenced, you know, and I, I wasn't feeling it. And I, I eventually felt like I had to get out of the, the label situation, you know what I mean? Because you know, they put a lot into me, they put a lot of money into it, and like, it was awesome, like, I was blessed to have been able to experience that, you know, at such a young age, I was 20 years old, but, you know, towards the end of my time at Interscope, you know, I just felt like, I need to, I need to get out of here, and like, I need to, I need to redo this album how I originally wanted to do it, you know what I mean? So, I ended up opting out of my contract with Interscope, I left, I became independent, and I kind of like, started over again, you know, I had a clean slate. The only record that I kept from my time with Interscope was Fourth Chapter. So I took that one record and I hit up my dude Ilmine, who uh, is, you know, not only one of my like best friends, he's a, like one of my g- greatest friends in the industry, but he's like my mentor, you know, he's one of my most frequent collaborators. He pretty much took me under his wing as an artist early on, like 08, 09, before I had the deal. and being around him all these years has turned me into such a dope producer, you know what I mean? So I was like, you know what, I'm going to hit up Illmind and I'm going to take this one record, fourth chapter I had that I did with this other cat, Ill Factor, so there's these two ills. I hit up Illmind when I, when I left and I came back to New York and I was just, you know, I'm starting out again, independent, and I told him, I was like, Ill, look, I want you to come in and like make this album with me how I always wanted to, ma- how I always wanted to make it, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I have this one record, and I have the album title, and I know how I want the album to sound, but like I don't have the sculpted project yet because I'm not with Interscope anymore, and I want to do it the right way now. So I left, I hit up Bill, he came through, and we literally just started making music with no plan. You know what I mean? Just no trying to make a radio record or forcing any type of single. He just came through, and we started just creating, you know, and literally once we got into a groove, you know, it took a couple songs because man, being on Interscope that whole time, like, I was deprived from my creativity. So I had to step away for a minute and really sit with Ill in the basement and, like, get back into my groove. The thing that got me signed in the first place, I had to go back to that place, you know? And, you know, after a couple days of being with Ill in the studio, we finally got in the groove and, like, literally every record we ended up creating went on the fourth chapter. 
So it's like, we made a record called Traffic Light, went on the album. We made a record called One Good Thing, went on the album. We made a record called October 10th, went on the album. So it's like, we didn't, we didn't shelve anything. Every record we made consecutively just was added to the EP. And after eight records, you know, or seven rather, uh, we said, yo, we have the EP. This is it. This is the fourth chapter. And this is how it always should have sounded. Um, so I have to thank Illmind for really like being there for me and helping me construct that album. And um, this was a time where I had zero fans, you know what I mean? I didn't have the following I have now. I didn't have the movement or the identity that I have now. And that album really was the first thing I put out as an independent artist, Clean Slate, that defined me, you know what I mean? And still to this day, it's funny because that's the first project I released as, a, as like a new defined artist and still to this day it still gets the most influential impact amongst fans. Like that's, that's the album that still now like resonates the most with, with fans and, and it just so happens it was my first project that I released, you know. Um, so that, that album is like the closest to my heart still. Even though the stuff I'm working on now I know like just puts it to shame, you know what I mean? Like and 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 it's just so much fuller and, and more intricate and more introspective than the fourth chapter was. But even, even still, I have to give it up to that album because if it wasn't for that project, I wouldn't have the identity or the brand that my fans know me for currently. You know, that was the one. The thing what it is is that that project marks time. Because when you listen to songs like October 10th, exactly. that marks time. Yeah. When you listen to a song is um, one good thing. Mm -hmm. It's your love and discovery of music. Yes. You know, and that can only happen in the inception in the beginning. Right. I can't tell that story twice. You know, like I told it on the fourth chapter, and that's why it's so special. That's why that album is so special. You know. Um, when I came back, um, you had a big deal on a label. Mm -hmm. um, it does seem that a lot of artists they get signed, their creativity gets stifled because the the numbers and the politics come and get involved. Um, and you said obviously when you made the fourth chapter that it put you back into the place to be yes. creative. Um, what what is it that actually happens to artists that they their creativity gets taken away from them? You know, I can't speak for every artist, but what happened with me? I mean, I, I can't speak for every artist because it's different, but I can assume that what happened to me is is a common thing. And I've spoken to other artists that have gone through the same exact thing. I think the reason why the creativity gets stifled is because when you enter a record deal or a record label contract situation, like you have to realize like you're you're at the helm of them, right? Like you kind of have to listen to what they have to say. That's part of the contract. You know, when you're independent, that's exactly what you are. You're independent. You do whatever you want. You're on your own. You call the shots, you know? Um, it's very common for artists that are new, that get signed, that don't really have leverage in the game, you know, that don't have an independent following, um, who just go straight to a label. It's, it's pretty much universal that they have to listen to what the label says, you know? And a lot of times, you know, um, outside influence gets in the way, like management, um, you know, management that has to play ball with the label. So it's like all of a sudden these dudes that you thought were on your side, before the deal, it's like they just they want to make it in the industry, man. It's like everyone at the end of the day is very rare to find people that truly look out for you in your best interest because everyone has their own agenda. And I know this is, sounds like dark and like crazy, but I'm I'm letting y'all know like this is the real shit. This is the real part of the industry that I myself experience, you know. And outside influence, man, like just management and and people within your team and. You know, they say that the people you keep around you reflect you. And if those people start doing things that are untrustworthy or go against what you want as the artist, it's going to, it's going to mess you up. It's going to put you as an artist on a detour, you know. And I personally, that's, that's what I experienced. And, you know, it's like once the deal happens, the, just the music and just the fan base doesn't matter anymore. It's, it's a business now. It's like you got to statistically, you know, provide numbers for the label and they're solely focused on that. They're not focused on you building a fan base from scratch organically. They're not focused on you being you who you are personably to your fans and building that fan base and interacting and doing the footwork. You know what I mean? Like they don't 
they don't really care about the development side, uh, at least from what I experienced. And because of that, and because of all those things that get in the way, that stifles creativity. Because then, as the artist, you start to second guess yourself. You know, you're like, well, damn, maybe these maybe these dudes are right. You know, maybe maybe they're right. Maybe I have to trust them. You know, they've done this so many times before. You know, the chairman of whatever label has done this. These broke artists, like maybe maybe they're right. Maybe I gotta let my creativity just kind of just chill for a sec and like just try out what they want me to be or what they want me to do because it, they make you think that that's how you get successful, you know? But that's not how it works. You know, that's, that's not real. It's not real. You know, success is based off of how hard you push what you want to push, your creativity, you know what I mean? And um, most of the times when an artist, you know, is successful the way he or she wants to be, it's because they had been doing it and holding on to that forever, you know what I mean? And with me, I, I signed really early and I was kind of in a frail position where like, I didn't, I, I didn't have any proof for the label. I couldn't prove to them that I'm touring Europe or around the world and I'm doing shows. I'm, I'm out here with my dude Hoodie Allen and we're, we're on tour and I'm signing autographs and look at my likes on Instagram and look at my social media, look at my statistics, you know what I mean? It's like I didn't have those things at that time and I kind of had to work backwards. You know, it's like I had to kind of sign and then get those things, but that's the mistake. You got to get those things before you step into a, a label position. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, I'm, but at the same time, I'm super glad that I was able to experience that at such a young age so that now, you know, as a 25 year old independent artist, I'm still young enough to have learned from it and know how to do it the right way now and not mess up, you know? So, I'm grateful, man. You know, I, I'm grateful for what happened to me, you know? You're very knowledgeable, and, and I think, and why I think <clears throat> it's, it was important to actually speak to you is because right. when you listen to your music, it's life and art. And when you look at people who think, well, I want to get in the industry, and the industry is littered with management, maybe playing double sides. So Crazy. Not, the, the management actually are independent. Management was looking after the, your interests, but they're thinking, well, if this size doesn't work out, maybe we can do another deal with them to get our 20% commission. Exactly. And it's those little nuances. And um, it seems like the creative industry seems to be really challenged with a lot of, um, uh, what's the word? Charlatans, mm -hmm. you know, people who, you know, and, and I think to be aware of that is important because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's your art, it's your craft, it's your talent, and it's your livelihood. Um, when you step away from that, and you said you was able to opt out. Um, getting a release from a label is usually a difficult thing to happen. Very. Especially if you have a, when you say a big deal, what was, if you could speak of that, how big was the deal at that time? Um, like numbers wise, my advance was $250,000. And then I did a publishing deal eventually. That was, let's just say that that was a lot of money. <laughs> okay. More than, more than yeah, there was. Uh, I'm not gonna give a specific number. I don't want to be that guy, but it was. Uh, I'll basically tell you what it was. It was three times the amount of my advance. So um, that's and a lot. and then you know ASCAP, who is my you know um, that's my musical rights associate. That's who protects me, right? I I was in a position with them at the time where I could have opted out of being with them because even before I got signed I like signed up for ASCAP on the internet when I was a young rapper like 17 just starting out and little did I know that years later when I'm now in a deal and my time with them was up from when I did that thing when I was younger uh, I could have left you know what I mean I, I could have they didn't they were like oh shit he's a real artist now like he signed like we want his we want him to stay so they offered me a check to stay and that that so it's like the advance, the publishing deal, the check from ASCAP, like we did really well, you know? Um, so, and, and like I said, I'm blessed to have been able to be a priority for Jimmy Iovine, you know what I mean? Like this is a dream come true. All of a sudden people are throwing these things at me because Jimmy's telling them to, you know what I mean? And like it was awesome. And that's part of, that's a big part of why I put my trust in all of these people that were around me. Cause it's like, it yeah, seemed, it's, it seemed to be working. You know, it's like Jimmy's putting me in rooms with Dr. Dre and and Pharrell and Mike Elizondo and DJ Khalil and I'm at his house, you know, having buffet style dinner with him. You know what I mean? And like other A&Rs from Interscope. So it's like, as a young kid, as a 21 year old kid, b experiencing these things and 
getting all of the accoutrement that came with it. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna listen to these people. I'm gonna kind of put my creativity and my vision that I w had from the beginning, I'm gonna put that on the back burner because this is awesome. You know what I mean? And that's the, that's the dark hole that a lot of artists fall into. You know what I mean? Um, you get caught up in the smoke and the mirrors. You know what I mean? And honestly, when, when I became independent and, and all those things got stripped away from me, and I don't have the Interscope card anymore, and I'm not going to Jimmy's house anymore, and I'm not in the room with, Dr with Dre anymore, you know what I mean? I'm not getting these sessions hooked up with all these legendary people. It's like when all these things get stripped away, you gotta learn how to like create yourself a fire from scratch. You know what I mean? And, and that right there is so much more important than just having it be given to you because you're just, you're super lucky. You know, I worked hard. I'm not saying that it was just given to me, but like when you compare my work ethic from when I was signed to when I became independent, there's no comparison. Like, when I became independent, that's when I became a worker. You know what I mean? And um, it's so much more important. And talking like in terms of my release, like yeah, it, it's very difficult. And um, you know, I was blessed enough to have a great lawyer who helped me, you know, kind of get out of there safely and soundly, and 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 be, and be able to keep the the funds that I made. You know what I mean? Like I was, I, I had an interesting situation when I got when I was terminated my deal with Interscope because I was able to leave and not have to pay any of that money back, you know? Um, the publishing deal, I have to pay that money back. But that's, that's the type that's of... Th that's through hits and... That's through hits and production and writing, and that's cool. Like, I, I believe that I'll be, over time, I'll be able to pay them back, you know? But I didn't have to immediately pay anyone back, you know? So I'm, I'm good, you know? It's like, I'm blessed. I'm blessed that I was able to experience it, step into the glamour world and see how that life works, you know what I mean, and be a part of it yet then be able to leave it, do it the right way, you know what I mean, and have the, the, the finances from that to, to now be able to do it independently how I want to. So I'm so lucky that, and blessed, man, grateful that like I have the money f from the label and from that time period in my life to now fund my vision, how I want to do it now, you know what I mean? So um, I'm, I'm blessed.